Deputy Dooley. Thanks very much, Count Corla. Uh, Minister, last week uh, you'll be aware that AIR announced plans to roll out fibre broadband to about 80,000 of the homes in the intervention area of the National Broadband Plan. And Imagine announced plans for 400,000 premises earmarked also for the intervention area. So these announcements are obviously welcome for those who finally have the potential to receive high speed broadband. Uh, however, these people have needed to cross the digital divide for some time. Now, of those 140,000 or so households who were not included in last week's announcements, the National Broadband Plan remains the only show in town. These announcements have a number of potential knock-on effects, which I think you, Minister, need to clarify uh, what the situation is, in particular for the households not included in last week's announcement. And I suppose the first question that arises uh, around the size of the intervention area, the rules of the National Broadband Plan were clear, as I understood anyway, it cannot cover areas where a commercial operator is already in place or has already identified uh, an area as being commercially viable. Now, Minister, can you confirm that the size of the intervention area uh, has been reduced uh, as a result of last week's announcements? But the second is around a timeline for the National Broadband Plan. The final tender, we understand, is with your department uh, since September. Uh, in November, you indicated uh, that you would bring your recommendation before the Cabinet within weeks. Uh, and since then, uh, we haven't heard uh, any much more detail other than that it will happen within weeks. Maybe you can give us some clarity there. Have these announcements in the past week, past week and a half, delayed decisions being brought forward by you and your department? And had you any uh, foreknowledge or forewarning uh, that these announcements were imminent or that the companies concerned uh, were working on plans to uh, roll out high-speed broadband to those areas? So the final issue, Minister, is, about, is around cost. Uh, we know that uh, the Secretary-General of your department accepted uh, at the PAC uh, that it was a reasonable conclusion to draw that the removal of the 300,000 homes from the intervention area in March 2017 made the NBP less attractive to bidders. So does the same logic apply here? Can we assume that the decision of AIR and Imagine to effectively offer a service to a potential 480,000 or four, in excess of 400,000 uh, homes impacts significantly on the attractiveness uh, of the National Broadband Plan. I, I would have thought it is reasonable to assume that the final price and rollout will be influenced by the size of the intervention area. Uh, it is reasonable to assume that the NBP cannot be rolled out in areas where a commercial operator is in place. We know the issues around state aid rules and prior to the development of the intervention area map there was a lot of toing and froing between your department uh, and the European Commission. Uh, it is reasonable to assume that the NBP cannot be rolled out, as I said, uh, in areas where a commercial operator is already in place or has already proposed um, to, uh, to roll out a service on, on a commercial basis. If the intervention area shrinks by up to 400,000 overnight, what happens to the cost to the state? And has the cost per household of the rollout increased or decreased as a result of the announcements last week? We know it has previously been reported uh, that the cost uh, of the National Broadband Plan in rather informed leaks to the Irish Times some time ago, uh, towards the end of last year, that the cost to the state um, was a multiple of what was originally envisaged and what was outlined uh, in the National Development Plan some figures quoted then seem to suggest that it, it had increased by between four and six times what was on originally envisaged. Could you provide us some clarity there? And how much is Granahan McCourt potentially going to get paid uh, in, in, in that case? Minister? Yeah, no, first, I thank Deputy Judy for raising this uh, matter. It is, uh, as you say, of, of very considerable uh, importance. Um, you know, the backdrop to the National Development Plan was exactly as the Deputy described there, that um, the purpose of the National Development Plan was to promote commercial investment to the maximum extent possible. And indeed, there's been $2.75 billion worth of investment in upgrading telecom networks since the uh, National Development Plan process started. Uh, the, the issue of the intervention area where a subsidy can apply, as the Deputy says, is uh, confined to areas where it has been established that the, uh, the um, other companies will provide uh, a commercial service uh, to uh, an adequate standard. Um, 
the 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 uh, the background, as you know, was that um, some time ago uh, there was. Uh, it was originally envisaged that there would be about 750,000 uh, premises in the in the intervention area. However, uh, through the monitoring by my department and the discussions with the commercial providers, that was reduced uh, by a number of 300,000, where Air undertook to deliver. Uh, to the necessary standard uh, on a commercial basis. Uh, at the same time, there were some uh, areas added to the uh, to the AMR area, as it's called, the intervention area, where it w the department was satisfied that this wouldn't uh, they wouldn't be served by those who had previously signalled their ability to, to to do so. So the position in relation to these new investments, which are indeed very welcome, is that uh, the our, my department is seeking an early meeting with both companies. Uh, at this point, uh, neither operator has submitted commercial or technical plans for the department to assess. So in order for us to uh, determine uh, that they have met the standard to reduce the size of the intervention area, we will need to have that level of scrutiny of their proposals. Um, the, the intention of the national development, uh, the national broadband broadband plan, excuse me, uh, as you know, was to deliver to 100 per cent of premises uh, a high-speed service, which is specified at that stage at, um, at uh, 30 megabits. Uh, I suppose there, there's, uh, there, there, the only other comment to be made is they, the, two dis, the two announcements by AIR and by Imagine are somewhat different. Uh, the announcement by AIR is expanding its uh, commitment to deliver fibre to the home, uh, which I I indicates, uh, I suppose, the trend of the, of the thinking across a lot of the sector, that fibre to the home is the standard to, to which, in the long term, we need to move. Uh, the, the Imagine proposal is uh, delivered wirelessly, so it is somewhat different in its uh, its uh, delivery. And I suppose I know that there were uh, comments and questions in the committee about the, the, the capacity of that to deliver uh, 100 per cent uh, in the way that fibre would. But these are issues that clearly the department will want to work out with the, uh, with the two companies uh, to see what impact they might have on the uh, intervention area. So, so points, final line in your written statement is that you expect to bring a recommendation to government in relation to the NBP in the coming weeks. I take it that that will be influenced to a large extent by the discussions or presentations from the companies concerned to your department uh, in relation to the, the impact of their announcements uh, on, on that intervention area. I, I can assume that, that that's the case. Um, if it is the case, Minister, uh, that the intervention area is to change very significantly, then it is absolutely clear that if the 120 odd thousand homes that are still not covered by any of the commercial operators are to be facilitated, the cost effectively remains the same. Because to roll out high speed broadband to the areas concerned, it's effectively the same network that you'll have to roll out. So the cost per household goes up very significantly. Uh, would you accept? that this is a factor or is as a result of the tardiness of your government and the previous one in its failure to reach a decision and roll out the service. And that as a result uh, of that tardiness, as a result of that, those delays, we're now left with a situation where we're effectively going to have to pay um, the same amount of money to cover an awful lot less homes Clearly, um, the PPP that was envisaged with, 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 as part of the NBP bidding process recognised that in addition to the state subvention, there would be a, a revenue return from customer uptake. If the cherry picking is now done by the two announcements, it's going to put a much greater liability uh, on the state uh, and delay further, I suspect, 
uh, the rollout of high-speed broadband uh, to those homes? Uh, well, I suppose that what I, I would say is I'm not going to draw a conclusion about the proposals. The figures uh, that, if you like, that AIR and the department have, uh, if you like, common, in common is 335. So there's 35,000 additional um, premises served by AIR. At the same time, there is a considerable number of premises which the department has identified in addition to the 84,000 that were taken out before, where although there was an indication that uh, commercial uh, service would be delivered, it does not now seem that they will be delivered. Um, in respect of the, the, the service which is wireless and based on 5G technology, I suppose the point has to be made that both the Comreg and the department's uh, experts have always argued uh, that, and in, indeed with, with in common with much of the industry, that uh, 5G networks and 4G networks are complementary technology to fibre rollout, and they're not a replacement. And there's a, a number of reasons for that. One is that uh, the, the, the wireless technology is line of sight, uh, so that has restrictions on its, its capacity, and to overcome those restrictions, you'd need a huge number of masts to be built. And uh, the, the evaluation by, by um, Comreg, I think, indicated that to build the number of masts on the scale needed was something like 1.8 billion. Uh, the second reason is, of course, that it is uh, a shared or contested, I think the word is, so that when the, there is a service delivered, the more people who come on board for the service, it gets diluted, which is unlike fibre to the home. So there, there are issues here that clearly the department has to tease out with the, uh, the, the, the two companies. Uh, it, I think it would be untrue for the deputy to assume that uh, the, the intervention area has been uh, reduced to, to whatever the number he Thank quoted you, uh, as a result of, of, of these decisions. But clearly, uh, investment in this area is very welcome. It brings forward the delivery of service, uh, but we will be um, listening closely to the companies before we, we give an indication, and I will uh, inform the deputy. Thank you, Minister Bruton.